Hello, I'm John Perry, Technical Project Manager with IPC, here with uh, this week's IPC Question of the Week. And this question is, what are uh, wrap requirements for plating in, in through holes, and where do they exist within IPC specifications? About two years ago, IPC updated the IPC 6012 Rigid Printed Board Performance Spec with new requirements for copper wrap plating in holes which generated a lot of buzz as well as a question of what is defined by uh, copper wrap plating. And what I'd like to do is show a visual here. This is from our current IPC T50 Terms and Definition Standard where we define uh, wrap plating as the electrolytic hole plating deposition that is continuously extending onto the surface from a plated via structure. And that's depicted here. This is the copper plating that builds up from the barrel of the hole and literally wraps around the knee of the hole and onto the surface of the land. So that is what we define by a copper wrap. The next question is, what are the requirements for that minimum thickness? What we have found is that within the industry, many people uh, who are dealing with filled vias want to planarize that via fill surface. If there's a, for example, if there's a uh, protrusion or what they call a bump, they may use sanding techniques or an etching technique to try and etch away the via fill material and planarize it. A problem with that is oftentimes that planarization process removes some of the wrap plating from the top of the hole and actually recall uh, ends up in what is called a butt joint or an electrical short. This next visual is an excerpt from IPC 6012B with Amendment 1 from January 2007 where we provide requirements for minimum wrap, copper wrap plating. And what we're saying is that the wrap plating has to extend from the barrel of the hole up onto the surface of the land, and it has to extend onto the surface of that land by a minimum of 25 microns, or approximately one thousandth of an inch. And this is where there is an annular ring that's required to be on the pad. And lastly, this brings us to the last question. Now that we've determined how far it has to extend onto the surface of the pad, the question is, how thick does it have to be on that pad extension? And one thing we want to stress is that if there's any type of copper cap plating that's put on, on the surface of the hole, such as uh, uh, this depicted here by this red metal cap plating, that is not included in the thickness calculation for the minimum copper wrap, because that copper cap plating is not part of the normal uh, electrolytic hole deposition plating process. Lastly, I'm going to show, this is an excerpt from Table 3-2 in IPC 6012. Many people are familiar with this table where we show the minimum requirements for thickness, or the minimum average requirements for copper thickness in the hole. We also provide a minimum thin area thickness where you might have uh, isolated thin areas due to nicks or pinholes or scratches. And what we've done in the recent Amendment 1 to 6012 is we've incorporated this row here where we provide the requirements for that minimum wrap thickness based on class 1, class 2, or class 3. Uh, and we further divided it between through hole, blind and buried vias, and micro vias. Again, this is in the current Amendment 1 to uh, 6012B, and it was published in January 2007. Thank you.